essentially he had to stay streaming as long as a certain number of subs came in. Is that correct? And that's how I kind of started watching Ludwig was I first saw him on YouTube and I was like, oh, he streams on Twitch. So I just tuned into a few streams and he's, he's a pretty interesting guy to watch. Um, <laughs> so I watched him for about like a year and uh, that's when he started like getting like pretty big it was like pretty much like when I started watching, we started just slowly curving up Um and then a year happened, and that's when his subathon happened with um, everything that I kind of got involved in. Can you tell me more about the subathon? If I remember yeah. correctly, essentially he had to stay streaming as long as a certain number of subs came in. Is that correct? Yeah. So the subathon is basically just a giant long marathon that. Um, so he did it for. He left like the week before, so he was gone for a week. He had like emergency surgery. He was just gonna originally do like a twenty-four hour stream, which is just him on the camera for twenty-four hours. Um, he came back and he wasn't feeling well enough to do that, so he said he would just do a subathon. Then he would go like for, like forty-eight hours tops. Um, he was really wrong. So a subathon basically is just um, each sub that you get to the um, channel like adds ten more, twenty more seconds to the stream. So, like, within, like, three days, I think, it was already, like, at 60, 60 hours left on the clock. It was ridiculous. Um, and that lasted for a whole month uh, where he just capped it and said that he was going to be done in a month pretty quickly. So, it was kind of impressive that it lasted that long. And all throughout that, I was, um, me and three other guys were all writing down on a spreadsheet the uh, numbers of how much time was left on the clock, how many subs he currently had and like his current category that he was streaming in or like what he was streaming so like game wise or like what he was even sponsored by i believe he did too that's awesome and so how did you decide to start collecting that information i was just kind of i was just kind of sitting there i was like i wonder like if there's like any sort of trend to like when this is going to actually end um because that'd be kind of cool to see so i just grafted a little bit in uh google sheets because that was just the easiest thing i could get to and no, not really. There wasn't any sort of trend. But I then realized that since I have how much time he has on the clock, like total, how much time has been added, I can figure out how much he's been earning. So that's $5 per sub, which is $5 per 10 seconds. So you can find out how much he's earning, which a lot of people are very interested in. It turned into more of like a money tracking of the, the subathon and where all of the like money went from that. I love your thought process associated with that. So it first started, obviously, is like, hey, can I predict this? A oops. A lot of questions that we have, they don't have clear answers. Like the answer for someone like me, to, for example, to predict what's going to happen with an individual stock on a given day or something like that, a little bit of a crapshoot unless I put a ton of effort into it. Um, but what you did find is that you were able to pivot that into something that people were really interested in. I love that you focused on understanding this fairly public problem that was interesting to you. And then you took that next step of inevitably, inevitably sharing this information and making it useful to other people. I find so much that the questions or problems that we're individually facing that we want to understand better. Odds are that someone else is going to have a similar question and just socializing that we might have a solution or we'd like to get to a solution is unbelievably powerful.